So we wanted to give you guys a little, uh, little clue about what our whole redesign felt like, and it was basically like that, a bunch of good yeah. intentioned people Sporting. doing the best that they could. <clears throat> Um, we have our hashtag in case you have any specific questions throughout the thing. We'll make sure to get back to it you know, once the, the session ends. Um, feel free to also use the regular NAGW 2015. Um, so, yeah, uh, I guess let's go ahead and start. Okay. Since, since we're Can you guys hear Alex? Is he in there yep, good enough? Exactly. Okay. okay. Um, so, my name is Alex Chaparro. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. Um, got my degree in design over there. Uh, started off my career with uh, DreamWorks Animation, uh, doing design with them. Um, moved to Austin in search of good barbecue and tacos. Um, started off with the uh, international office at UT Austin. Um, ended as a creative director for them and then have been with uh, Travis County for about five years as webmaster. And I'm uh, Chris Stangland, I'm the web manager. I've been with Travis County for eight years from the East Coast more or less. Um, and uh, I love living in Austin, like everybody does. So I guess we first wanted to start off really quickly with to get, in, get a feel for who's here, why you're here type of thing. Um, so, just do a so yeah, so a show of hands, who here is getting ready to do a major rebuild on their site? Okay, good. Um, who here is in the middle of a major rebuild? Okay, and then finally, who is never ever going to rebuild again, possibly because they they just rebuilt? Because that's I think that's us. That's like yeah. we're traumatized already. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Stockholm syndrome. We love it and hate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, but so we wanted to be clear up front that this is sort of a 101. This is a case study about how we went about this and what we learned and what we didn't learn, um, and so. Since you are all webmasters, conceivably, um, maybe this is commim commiseration as much as it is information, but here Hopefully we go. Hopefully some of it you'll find useful. Um, we came up with a brief overview <coughs> really quickly, um, you know, using sort of... Just a simple diagram. Simple diagram to kind of explain everything. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I don't even know if this is, this is you know, a quarter <laughs> of our county org chart yeah. or something like that. Yeah, but this was the perfect example yeah. to us of what government, like, this is a simple graphic. Let's put that on the site. Yeah. You, you should... Yeah. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so really, you know, we're going to talk about a little bit uh, about uh, what our philosophy was in our approach to our redesign, um, how we went about it, uh, what we discovered for design and anatomy, and then just the building process, the ups and downs, the, the, trouble, the trouble spots, I yeah. guess, at the beginning. <laughs> um, and um, we really just sort of, uh, for us, we started off, I guess, with, with, with the problem of having our site that was just really, really old. Like, we, we decided to do it because we had a really old site. Um, other people might not be in that same situation, but we were sort of galvanized where we had no choice but to, but to start yeah. something new. So in, at lunch, a fellow asked us, well, when was the last time your site was redesigned? And the answer is literally, it had never been rebuilt or redesigned from the early mid 90s when you know people came over from the computer operations center and started doing web development and they did their best and they did a good job with the resources that they had but the site at this point in time was a maze of nested includes and tables as well as CSS and it was JavaScript and VB script and ASP client side and server side I mean it was a nightmare it was a shanty town because it was built with no plan at all it was just built organically iteratively by by good people doing the best that they could but the result was not not supportable so the expensive CMS, am I allowed to say this? So, so actually, the expensive CMS was actually that not was on not the me. internet. It was an intranet CMS, and it was WebSphere Portal. Right. Seven figures. There were talks about us using that for our external For site. everything. Yeah, for everything. And we sort of quickly, yep. once we saw the path that that was going to take, and just the support you know, and maintenance every year, it was just not. It was a nightmare. Yeah. It, it was, was literally a nightmare. Really, really. Um, so, because of that, we sort yeah. of saw like, you know, we have sort of three different paths to choose. Um, we have the idea of uh, going rogue, which we sort of already tried. We, that's what we were doing originally um, with sort of mixed results. 
Um, it's something that we sort of quickly threw away as, as not an option for us. Yeah. Um, the other was consultants. And consultants are, that's, when we say consultants, we really mean a proprietary CMS, probably set up by a consultant. And this is a great solution. If you have the money, you can do that. You know, the budgetary realities that we had, we could get resources to work among ourselves much, much more easily than we could say, oh, here, give us, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to build a thing and then go away and let us support it. It just, it wasn't realistic for us. Again, with them also, it's just maintenance. Mm -hmm. yep. like, there's going to be some kind of package that you have to sign up for or training or something. Yep. So. And as you invest yourself in this custom thing, you get farther down that path and it gets harder and harder to extract yourself from it. Um, um, and then when we started, you know, open source was really blowing up. Uh, a lot of people were using Drupal. Uh, there was another one called Joomla and WordPress. Um, we saw these as really, you know, good options for us basically because they were free. Uh, the only price being that we had to learn it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so um, we sort of wanted to explore that and say maybe this is what is for us. Um, but before we eventually picked what we ended up doing, um, we had to discuss sort of uh, what our philosophy was for our county website. Yeah. So Travis County, Texas is a large urban county. It contains the majority of the city of Austin and then another half million or so people. Um, it's got a disparate population. It does a lot of things. We've got, you know, a gi gigantic number of uh, park acres, you know, 45,000 acres of parks, something like that. Um, and we, you know, so we have light, fun things, and then there are also much heavier things like, you know, the sheriff's office, my brother's in jail, how do I get him out, stuff, voting, various courts. Um, so the, the role for us of the government website is actually, it's very, it's quite varied. Um, smaller, smaller jurisdictions and smaller departments, obviously, your, your mileage may vary. And on a constituent level, it's more about, you know, we were thinking about where do we fit in users' lives? Um, you know, where do they see us on their scale of importance? Um, are they actually going to be going our, to our site the way that you would, you know, Huffington Post or Reddit or anything like that? Um, we sort of felt that, you know, we aren't at that, at that end of the, of the spectrum of website use. Um, part of that is, is the sort of the idea of, um, you know, who really says that I love the DMV, right? Um, what kind of transactions are people having with the county? Um, most of the time, people are paying tickets or having to go to sign up for jury duty or get a passport. And so we sort of saw ourselves as, um, you know, we want to get you in. We want you to have a seamless experience and smooth and then go about your day. And we understand and we're not offended that it's a transactional thing. You're coming to us for the specific item of information that you want, and once you get it, you can go merrily on your way. Right. Um, you know, they're paying us to do this type of thing, right? We're getting tax dollars, so we want to show, like, we're duty-bound to, to give you a good experience. Mm -hmm. um, part of that is, if it helps, I guess, in any way, is we sort of saw ourselves as being in, in the friend zone when you're in those types yeah. of relationships, right? <laughs> um, we're there to help out. But you know, it's sort of a one-sided, you know, always a bridesmaid, never a bride type thing. Um, you know, with that said, though, um, we did understand that we are sort of a monopoly. Um, you have to come to us. You, you're not going to go to another county to get what you need. Um, with that, though, uh, not having any competition or anything like that, um, you do have responsibility. You do have the power to control what's going to be out there. Um, so, so the idea is, um, because you have that, and because counties and cities and, and states have that type of thing. Um, you know, there should be more of an inclusive type of feeling with like, we should be able to share things because again, we're, we're not competition. We're not going to steal each other's, you know, constituents. Yeah, there is no competition. Right. Everybody's on their own. Um, so again, in developing the philosophy, we sort of came up with the <coughs> main tenants, um, customer service uh, being the main one for us. Um, because we were going from this, you know, 90s dial-up type website, we thought we need to get ourselves to a certain point uh, to get our users to a certain level. Uh, for all of our websites, for all of the departments. Um, we want them to be fast and friendly and useful, uh, to, to be able to use a search engine that actually works well and gets mm -hmm. you to where you need to go. To be able to view the site on whatever device they bring, to be able to, to find the information that they need from any number of ways rather than just being able to get there through some arcane series of menu commands. And this is, again, you know, we are going from step one to step, you know, five out of ten. Um, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you've already redesigned your site and you're, you're in the middle of the pack, 
then you might not focus so much on customer service. You might focus more yeah. on something like accountability. Um, so openness, the, the, the thought that you should do your best, that we should do our best to remove barriers between constituents and the information that they want. Part of that is, for, for us, is open records and open data. Um, we're trying to, our hope was to better facilitate the end users getting to that stuff. But then also, Alex touched on it a little bit, but the idea of being accountable for the money that we're spending on the website. Because um, you know we are beholden to the constituents, and we need to continue to be good stewards of tax dollars. And so, you know, spending X Y Z amount of money on a CMS that isn't being used is not a good stewardship of tax dollars. And it's just something that we needed to keep in mind. Right. Um, the last one of the three was uh, engagement. Um, so that has to do with how you talk to your audience, whether it's by email or by phone or in person, uh, and especially nowadays within social media, how you, how you reach your audience, yep. right? Meeting them where they already are. They're already on Twitter, they're already on Facebook, they're probably not already on your site, but if you go to Twitter, if you go to Facebook, to some degree you can meet them where they already are. Yeah, and for us the level of importance varies. You know, you have customer service, you have accountability and engagement. Um, we needed customer service severely at the beginning. Um, and now that we're at this point, we're addressing more, you know, the accountability and the engagement. We're making it more fun to use. We're making, you know, bigger, bolder graphics, things to get people to stay interested, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, in doing this, uh, we sort of, uh, you know, we're doing our research and we're, we're trying to synthesize, uh, I guess, the best idea of, like, how to you know, get you to where you need to go the fastest mm -hmm. as possible. Yep. Um, if you take away one lesson from this, uh, from this talk, this one would be it. Um, yes, and it all comes down to, you know, Steven, yeah. right? Um, and that's just a, maybe not as nice of a way of saying it's doing your research and, and, and uh, yep. borrowing, right? Um, we sort of, when you do research and you're seeing what other people are doing, you get a sense of uh, a lot of counties, states, cities, they, they hire these huge consulting agencies uh, uh, to do all of the work. And so, you know, we're gonna do the research anyways, but they have, uh, there's no need to sort of reinvent the wheel. It's, it's like meta research. Instead of, instead of figuring out, I mean, to some degree, instead of figuring out for yourself which, uh, yeah, yikes, um, which it is, figure out what, what other people have figured out and, and use that as a starting point. And if you keep that in mind, like if we aren't competing for customers, then, then it's good to see what, what people have paid all this money for. Like, is it worth it? Right? Um, and when we did the research, we sort of start to discover that there is an anatomy for government websites. Um, you see that they are built a certain way. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we can start off yeah. sort of uh, with navigation, right? Um, we you sort of start to see that everyone tends to have these three main buckets for organizing their content. You have, you know, government or directory, whichever you want to call it. Uh, you have resident and you have business. Um, and everything sort of flows through there, mm -hmm. right? Typically there will be a search box on the top. It might be a whole box, it might just be an icon. Right. Um, Some people are now doing you know, the search, like a huge search bar in like the main body of the section. Um, mm -hmm. We sort of chose to go away from that. Uh, the idea being just mainly that that essentially is a Google you know, page, right? Um, when you search in Google, it takes you to where you need to go. So if you're searching for passports, it's gonna take you to the passports page. If for whatever reason you don't find what you need there, you're gonna to go to the home page. And if you just see another search box, then it's, for, for us, it's kind of like you're doing a disservice. You're not giving them any kind of options to doing something else. So, so for us, we felt more comfortable. Let's put it at the top where it's sort of the norm, I yeah. guess, instead yep. of doing that in the middle. A norm. Yeah, <laughs> a norm, right? Um, Utah, though, does it really well. Like, when you're typing it, it's not just filling it in, it's also pulling up search results as yeah. you're typing it. So, yep. that, so that's a cool thing that not all of yep. the ones Phila also was showing that. Right. Um, right. Yep. So yeah, the, then you've got the candy, which is the big beautiful graphic. Typically, it's a slideshow. Um, lots of times it will have, you know, something, something timely. You know, it's, it's time for the uh, whatever. Summer reading 2015, you know, yeah, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's just a chance to make it pretty. It's just your chance to make it pretty. Um, you have then sort of the meat of it. You have the quick links, the top places that people go to, um, the news that needs to get out there, um, sort of for whatever reason, whether it's department driven that says this, this needs to be out there, so, so you know, they need to get mm -hmm. it. 
um, or where you put kind of uh, uh, officials and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and then lastly, you have the footer, which sort of tends to have the leftovers of everything. Yeah. Um, you know, typically it has a seal or, or something like that, um, but also that's where everyone's sort of putting their social media. Yeah. Well, it's funny, you know, the social media shows up down here, but then it also shows up in the quick links, and then for some it shows up at the top. And I think that part of this is because it's emergent and people are still sort of figuring out how, how they want to go about that. Um, but there's another thing, the... Um, you know the, 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 the hamburger, you know, little three lines, you know? Somebody made that up at some point. Somebody decided that that was a good idea and now we all know what it means. And I think that that's sort of the lesson that we're talking about here is somebody has already done a lot of this work and we can, you know, we can build off the back of it. Yeah, you sort um, of see that there's a design syntax. Like, this is done, so, the, you know, the idea of don't recreate the wheel. Um, there is a government standard. We talked about doing things differently. We had some mock-ups of like, hey, let's, let's you know, do things a little bit differently. Um, but how different do you want to go, I guess? Because people sort of expect to see uh, things organized a certain way. Um, there's talks like the, the cool uh, presentation that just happened with uh, the Alpha Philly, where they're talking about service-oriented design. And that definitely has a place in your website. I don't think it's you know, choosing one or the other. Um, but you sort of need to have both. You have different types of users. Um, you know, you look at your analytics and you see what's the best way to get them to where they need to go. Um, there definitely, at least for us, for our case, is a, is a, is a place for things organized by departments. Um, this is sort of the big thing, is just understanding and being comfortable with saying, hey, let, it's okay to borrow from what has been done in the past, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, one of the things that we, we talked about repeatedly through this process was that there's sort of an austerity, that there should be sort of an austerity to government site. It's, you know, it's different than, uh, than any number of commercial entities, but, you know, the flashiest site in the world probably isn't appropriate, I mean, to our way of thinking. Um, but that, that was one of the things we thought about. Um, another thing to consider is branding. Um, you may not think about it as much as the way that maybe a, a consultant might. Uh, but generally, you know, in regards to identity, you sort of think, think about who you are, right, as a county, like how you want to present yourself. Uh, the, the process that we went through of, of what our philosophy was fell into that, really. Yep. And the earlier you can put together a brand book or a style guide, the, the better. The sooner that there's a concrete something that you can show to people as you're building things, the, the better off you'll be. The one that Alpha Philly showed was great. We have one as well. It's, 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 it's very good. It's not, not quite as great as that one is, but um, there's a link to it at the end of the, at the, end of the talk. Right, right. Uh, then again, logo, right? <clears throat> you, know, you have your logo, whether it's just your seal. Um, you have, you know, you pick a font, you pick a color, uh, depending sort of um, on your level of comfortableness, right? Mm -hmm. um, if, if you are going to use a consultant, this is probably where you would get the most bang for your buck. Yeah, um, if you can't buy the whole thing, but you have some budget for a consultant, a design sensibility is a, is, seems like a great way to spend some of that money because you might not have, you might not need, you might not have an excellent designer on your staff, but they do, yeah. you know? Um, and the big it, it's, thing being that they, let you bring every, they let you have everything be consistent. Mm -hmm. And so your user now starts to understand that these are all the same from the same site. Uh, they start to be comfortable with your site because it's all being presented in the same way. Um, so really sort of decide on whether you're comfortable or not with hiring a consultant and doing it yourself. Um, you know, if you're not comfortable with your style, you know, maybe really think about getting a consultant. Um, but always, you can always fall back on the idea of just black goes with everything, right? You can start off with black, build your site, and then evolve. Right? <laughs> black on black. Yes. Yep. yes. Black letters. <laughs> um, um, uh, differentiation, um, this is much deeper, but, but really for us it was just uh, why are our departments different? What services do they offer? And just with that, it allows us to sort of say what's going to go on their landing pages. Um, and then position, again, just where do we fit in, in users' lives? And so, you know, some people, you know, want to be very prominent, right? And, and with us, we were comfortable with saying we are a very small, we take up a very small part of their lives. And that's, that's what the goal should be for us at this point. Um, 
Uh, the other big ingredient, I guess, would be content strategy. Um, you can really, really go deep into this. For us, again, because we were moving from something old to, to we wanted to get it just cleaned up a little bit. Um, you know, you can ask why forever and, and really, really mm -hmm. get to the heart of things um, to the point where you're asking, why was I asking this, right? <laughs> um, but we weren't there, we're not there. Um, we really are asking these really simple questions, right? Um, the first one being, you know, what is most popular? Yep. Um, I'm sure most of you do it already, but Google Analytics for us was a huge um, boon in showing us what users were looking for, how they were getting there, where they were leaving our site, what search terms they were using to get there. It's free, it's easy. Um, that was one of the first things that um, that we started leveraging to, to figure out how to rebuild these things and how to re-architect, or I guess there's no read to it, but how, how to architect um, the site. Right, and the analytics is just one side. The other side where you get a, a better complete picture of how people are using it is um, uh, what will reduce calls and emails. If you talk to the front line of people who are actually dealing with users, whether it's on the phone or in person, you know, they can help you sort of say, this is what they're coming to me for and this is what I'd like for them to stop calling me about. Um, and you can try to make sure to address that on the website. Yeah. Um, you can try to see where that falls in, whether it's the home page or some kind of secondary page. Um, and the beauty of talking to them is, is one, you build a rapport, but also it's something that you can revisit. So you can say a couple of months later, like, hey, is this working for you? Um, if not, let's fix it. If it is, let's, let's keep yep. continuing to answer all those questions. The what call do you get the most question will always be a valid question because even if you address it, something else will rise to the top that maybe you can take care of. Um, um, what people need to know, um, this is also, again, it might be department driven, like uh, if, they, if there are services that they offer, you know, something simple like that, just getting that out there. Um, another one, which is a part of this, is contact information. We sort of mm -hmm. felt it needed to be called out because a lot of times websites don't have contact information. Yep, and that is often the number one answer to what, to, what call do you get is, you know, how do I get to you, whatever. Um, but a, another simple thing, and uh, you know, again, it's Google, is every time we have an address, we try and link to a Google map. Um, it, ma the majority of users in our experience use them anyway, and it, it's a quick and easy uh, way to get people into the information that they want. Um, what you want to promote, that just has to do with if, if departments have events going on or if they have a certain... Uh, You're unplugged? I don't know. Oops. Yeah, if you have a certain uh, service that you want to promote, it's, it's just that's what it is. Um, the other big piece, piece is the stench of politics, right? Yeah, so Travis County, you know, again, is a large, a large county. We've got 50 plus elected officials, each of whom outrank us. They each have a staff, some of whom outranks us, so that there are times when somebody will put their foot down and we'll try to put our foot down for as long as we can, and at some point we have to roll over and say, okay, we're gonna make the headers all red on your page because that's what you request. This, this really happened, but that person was voted out Yes. And we, we to took the color back, it never by gosh, it never yeah. Happened. It's like, um, and, and another thing that, that often politics will want to put up front is a mission statement. And I'm, I'm gonna make a slight generalization and say that no one in the history of the world has ever read a mission statement on a website except for the person who put it out there. Yeah, right. It's just not what, not what people are interested in. Um, yeah, and so the idea of like, um, for us it was, you know, having something that's good enough versus having something that's perfect. And when we're doing the whole rebuild and we're having to deal with so many departments, um, sometimes you'll, you'll have people that want a certain color or want a mission statement on there. Um, and you really have to choose your battles because you can get stuck on there and, you know, hold everything up. Or you can just say, sure, fine, you know, but just let me continue to finish it, to get everything done. Um, we all know it's a process, a never-ending process of redesigning things. So, so sure, you know, go ahead and let them have what they want and work with someone that is willing to work with you. Um, but don't let it bug you too much. Right? Yeah, live to fight another day. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, one thing to remember with that is, of course, like, uh, you know, YouTube started out by just showing standard definition videos, videos that were grainy. Um, what mattered was the content and the level of engagement, right? It wasn't having HD quality video yet, right? So just just do it in, doing it in chunks, yeah. you know, doing it in chunks. You will never have something that's perfect, so if you already know that, then just, just you know, put your head down and just work in chunks. Yeah. Um, so we had our ingredients. We ended up choosing uh, Joomla for our CMS. Um, yep. So it's the, the, the Goldilocks thing. For us, you know, there, 
the, the three main uh, open source CMSs were uh, WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. And you know, WordPress is sort of the, the baby bear one, and, and Drupal is, is the big mean bear. And we found uh, Joomla to be just right. Right in the middle, it's uh, extensible enough and developable enough that we could get our hands into it, but it's not so, such a hockey stick of a learning curve that we were going to smash into it and die. Um, it has proven to be so as well. It's, yeah. it's worked out really nicely. Yeah, Drupal, uh, we just never saw ourselves at a point where we needed something so hugely extensible. That we could excuse spending the, the resources that it would require to get to be conversant in it. Um, we're okay with being B-level students. Yeah, we're exactly. Not, we're not yeah. overachievers. Yeah. You know, we're not overachievers. <laughs> um, with WordPress, it, you know, I sort of really gravitated towards that at the beginning, but at the time, and this was, this was a couple years back, um, our security team just said no to it. They just said it, it had, you know, they weren't comfortable with it. Um, so even though for us it would have been easier to sort of work with, they just said yeah. it was a non-starter type thing. Yeah. Um, so Google, yeah, uh, you know, we have Google Webmaster Tools, Analytics, Maps, Google Search. We use YouTube. Uh, Google, while they are still being um, kind, is a, is a great resource that we use for a ton of things. Yeah, we really do. If you only use Google, you know, your you site. could you could almost build a site using just Google yeah. resources. You really could. Yeah, between that and social media, basically, yep. basically, if your your site ever goes down, yeah. <laughs> social media, Google, yeah, you're, you're, you know, yep. you're okay for a little while. It's a nice little bandage. Um, custom extensions. So uh, Joomla, like Drupal and WordPress, have a lot of extensions. Some are paid for and some are free. Um, make your site look prettier. Make it more useful. Um, we went from paying a whole lot of money um, to now we pay about maybe $500 annually. Um, about half of that is recurring costs to, to keep you know, our, our upgrades to our extensions. The other half is trying out new ones. Um, so for us, you know, it, it was a nice little jump, nice little savings. Um, we didn't see any of that savings no. <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. But the county, I'm sure they appreciate it. Right? Yeah. Um, the information architecture and the content strategy, again, um, uh, picking and choosing, uh, recycling and repackaging what's out there. Um, because, because, partly because of the size of our team, partly because of the time that we wanted to get it done in. Um, and also, sort of, um, again, uh, it's out there, so why not? Mm -hmm. Same thing with social media. Uh, it's a, it's a, in some ways, it is a shortcut. It's an ability for disparate users to make updates quickly and have them reach a lot of people. Um, and it's also where people already are. So um, it's hugely um, important. Yeah, and I mean, you can go into a huge, huge involved discussion about social media, but you know, this is not. This is not that, yeah. Um, best practices, again, this has to do with accessibility, you know, being responsive, we want it to be responsive, um, leveraging Google, and also just uh, doing user testing while you're building it out. Um, if you have assumptions, then, then go ahead and test it out and see how that works with the users. Um, so we had all that, and we basically you know, got, our, got our big boss to say, go ahead and start. Yep. Um, uh, the starting process really involves getting buy-in. Um, initially, that involved uh, getting just the web team on board with like saying, OK, we're going to learn this new CMS, and yeah. you know, we're going to go through the growing pains, and we're OK with it. Yeah, but it also involved for us getting our network team on board, and getting our security team on board, and getting our server team on board, because these are people who are all you know, fat, dumb, and happy doing what they were doing. Why should they go out of their way to support this thing that they've never even heard of before? And getting that buy-in you know, took, took a little wrangling. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even to, <laughs> this, day, even to this day. It's sort of a mix. It's sort of a mixture. They handle mainly the server updates. Um, uh, we'll talk about it a little bit later. But like, so it's a uh, like we use IIS. They make sure that's up to date. PHP up to date. Things like that. Um, when Joomla has an update or the extensions, like the SlideShow extension has an update, we'll go ahead and do those and just uh, uh, talk to them to make them sure uh, make sure that if there's an outage, they're aware. Um, choosing your allies. Uh, when you start down this process, you want to do everything possible uh, about choosing someone that is going to be uh, okay with working with you. Um, we had the luxury of, of, 
uh, parks and sheriff, which were sort of our two bigger sites, um, that had resources that they could dedicate to working with yeah. us to, to build their These are both departments that had, to some degree, a web team that they were willing to put in with us or to, to have work with us on getting their sites up. And so we were able to snowball you know, their sites into other sites. Oh, look, the sheriff's site is all rebuilt. It's on this new system. You know, here, parks, take a look at this. What do you, you know, and... And yeah. it, it matters a lot. Like, um, having proof of concept allows you to, to get other people to buy into it. Um, it also helps if you have thoughtful leadership. Yeah, so we were lucky enough that um, early on in this process, we got a new CIO who's terrific and who is really supportive of this, um, who was a strong advocate for, for everything we're talking about. And um, if you don't have somebody who's like that, I don't know what to tell you. Because, I mean, we literally couldn't have done it without there being points in time where our CIO, Tanya Acevedo, she's terrific, without her putting her foot down to somebody else and saying, no, this is how it's going to happen. If you don't have that, I don't, you know, I genuinely don't know what to tell you, but good luck. Yeah. Yeah. And okay, to not leave on yeah. a negative <laughs> note, it's, it's really proof of concept. Like, show it what, with, with one department. Like, get buy-in and, and really just sort of do your grassroots movements. It's, it's the only way if you don't have buy-in from management is show them one that works and then keep showing them that and it, it will build. Um, because even though we did have a, a, great, a great CIO, sometimes you needed that extra nudge. For you sure. Needed, you needed to show them that, like, look, it's working for them, it can work for you. Um, yep. And then our team, we have a web team. It's um, four people, one of whom was an intern at the beginning of this, became a full-time member. And then we also have a project manager who works with us, but she's not full-time member of the team. Um, we have different skill sets. Line. Yeah, she keeps us in line. The third, mem third member of our team is Kate here. She's, she's here as well. And poor Samantha is the only one actually doing work back in Austin. Just like any normal government job, right? Yeah. One out of four. That's, that's good. <laughs> good. But we, you know, we have different skill sets that overlap, but not completely. And, um, and it's, I think we were lucky to have a good team in place. Um, that, that could cover all the bases that we needed covered for this. Which was really important when we were building it up because, um, you know, the initial idea was to build everything uh, sort of in a sandbox. Like, let's do department by department. Let's deploy Joomla, you know, one department at a time. And, um, you know, our server team said, you know, that's just not going to happen. So, you know, we were left with only one choice, which was let's just do everything yeah. all at once. Rebuild the 5,000 plus page website and launch it all at once yeah. while maintaining the existing website with the same staff. So um, it was a big it was a big sandwich to eat. We had a lot of crying. Yes, sobbing. We still do. So security, this is one of those things we're not, you know, addressing security too much in this because it's like it's sort of like saying, well, you're going to need electricity in order to make this all happen. It's just it's got to be it's got to be there the whole time. We have a little more um, yeah, about it. Day one type thing. Yeah, but you know, a culture of safety, think about it, um, and all your people think about it. Beltness suspenders, that's the idea that you don't rely on just one thing. You have a couple of things holding your pants right. up. Um, um, backups are hugely important. Um, I, just most CMSs have that. Um, for us, it was essential. You're going to break your site. The server team is going to break your You're site. You're going to break your site You're at 9 o'clock on election night. Yeah. Um, you know, um, yeah. Um, always the ideal time. Always the ideal time, yeah, absolutely. When the server team is on vacation. Um, regular updates, obviously, we just talked about that a little bit, but keeping everything up to date. And then constant vigilance. Always think about it. Have it be one of the questions you ask yourself as you do everything. We asked ourselves a security question today about the, the, this, this talk, right. you know, it's Luckily just... Luckily we weren't at work, so it just... Yeah. <laughs> nah, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. It'll be fine. Um, so, you know, as we were building it out, you know, you, you build the foundation and you start seeing that as you're porting over pages, um, it, it tends to become really monotonous. Um, and this is where you have, you know, an ace in your sleeve and it really is um, getting an intern. Yeah. Right? No um, fooling. Yeah. Um, they want to work. They would love to have a government thing on their resume. The, um, the, the people at the community college or the regular college, the, the, what do you call it, the guidance counselor will set it all up and you'll get somebody, possibly a computer science student who will come in and do horrible, horrible work tirelessly. Um, we really, I mean, we leaned on this, this poor kid 
who we got um, broken. we re broke him he he's like yeah he's he's he joined this he's just gone yeah. um but no it, I, um it it really is a great thing and now it's an intern it's you know a young green employee and they need a different level of supervision than a different employee would and uh if i have a couple of drinks later ask me to expand on that but um but it's great in travis county also you can uh, you we haven't availed ourselves of this but in travis county you can also get prison labor you know they 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 like have a program where you can get um prisoners to come to your site and work for you yeah, I know <laughs> alex actually came yes. over to that program <laughs> um so pitfalls uh of which we had many 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 right many. Uh, we'll cover a couple of them uh the biggest one being uh, the learning curve um i guess depending on your background it could be higher or lower um I'm a designer sort of by trade um, and going from looking at and making pretty things to looking at code was sad right <laughs> for a little bit um, but luckily there's a huge number of resources out there there's a huge community for for all you know Joomla Drupal and all of those um, that are willing to help out and um, it made it so much easier uh, it also just we were all sort of on the same boat so maybe you know Chris learned something before I did, and you know we can ask each other that type of thing. Um, but the curve is there. It um, is. And depending on how many extensions you add on, it, you know it can either you can either have it go down or you can have it go back up. Yeah. Again, right. <laughs> yeah. For us, it was a little bit complicated, more complicated too, because Joomla typically is recommended to be a lamp, um, you know, stack Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. But Travis County is not at all a Linux shop, so we had to do it WIMP, Windows, IIS, MySQL, PHP, and it's you know just a vastly smaller user set out there. So when you, when we're having problems, you know obviously you go to you go to Google, you go to the boards, you go to the mailing lists, and it's much more rare to find um, to find people who are having those problems. So if you do this. Go lamp unless you absolutely have to. But no one has problems with Microsoft. Yes, it's no never, one's. never. It never yep, not us. Yeah. Um, the other thing was uh, sort of uh, working with departments um, when you're going through the design process. Um, this whole idea of the design trifecta of them wanting something good and fast and cheap, um, and and you are just trying to manage their expectations, right? You're trying to tell them that you're going to get them to a good place, to a better place than they were before. Um, and that you're going to keep building on that. Um, and a lot of times, you know, they're receptive to it. Uh, sometimes they're not. But for the most part, uh, for the most part, we were lucky enough that they were, you know, mostly on board except for some color, yeah. color <laughs> things, right? Yeah. Um, uh, the other big thing was <coughs> the ego. Um, and that, is, that has to do with not only uh, uh, other departments or, or, or uh, people who are uh, voted in <laughs> <laughs> Um, but also us is just you know of course you want to build this beautiful perfect thing um, but there's so many people involved there's so many pieces out there that uh, you just need to understand um, that you just want to get it done yeah and the idea of, of having something perfect is sort of an illusion um, yeah for us good enough had to be good enough um, right with the resources that and the expectations that we had there were many places where we had to make concessions or compromises and you know that's okay um, it's not ideal, but it's okay. Yeah, we know we're going to get back to it at some point. Mm -hmm. um, we did try doing some workarounds, the big one being just lying to them, just saying, you know what, the CMS just isn't It's impossible. It, it can't do, can't, can't do yeah, content, It's physically right? impossible for that to happen. Right. Um, sometimes that works. <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> we, we had a pretty good, you know, pretty good results with that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you take what you can get, I guess. Yeah. Right? Don't um, lie. <laughs> I'll lie, he, he'll, he'll, he won't. Um, so I, I guess this, this, it's not the end of it. Like, we're always yeah. sort of evolving on it. We got to a nice, happy place with our website. Um, it's definitely not the end, but it lets us have, uh, we have a nice foundation now to build on. Yeah, right? the end of the beginning. The end of the beginning, yes. Yeah. Um, we had our old site, which is just really, really. The, the last word there is the most yeah. instructive for yes. that one. Yeah. Right. Um, we, we got to move to our New Year's site. <coughs> dun, 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 dun. Yep. Um, um, yeah, so we're using an open source CMS, right? Uh, it's, it's fully responsive. <laughs> fully, absolutely fully. Just about. Um, 
Um, yeah, one of the beauty, beautiful things about using Joomla um, was that it, it does allow for agile development. If a department wants to test out a couple of test pages or build a new section to their site, we can do that relatively quickly, um, get it back to them. The turnaround time is much faster than we ever had before. Um, and, and having a, a unified design allows us to have consistency. Having a style guide allows us to show them this is how, it's, how we want to do it, right? Again, you know, yep. Yep. Uh, that only goes so far. Um, and of course, it's more user-oriented, right? Um, including things from, from uh, many different places um, helps users get to where they need to go. Yeah. So it's interesting to point out, um, you know, between the, the search box, the calendar, YouTube, translate, you know, I mean, fully like 20% maybe of the site is Google or Twitter, you know? It's just interesting that so much of the above the fold stuff on the front page is external services, um, free external services. The resources are there. Yeah. Um, our team, we're fortunate enough to have four people on our team. Um, you know, some of this we sort of feel can get done reasonably with, with a smaller team. Ideally, ideally, if you have a smaller team, you have a smaller yeah, smaller things being so, asked of yeah, you. Right. Yeah. Idea. Um, <clears throat> great. That's a good slide. That's a perfect slide. Um, so the last thing we had is just because we were, you know, using open source and we got a lot of free resources and things like that, we thought, you know, maybe it'd be cool to pay it forward. And, and um, we kind of thought, well, we're just going to uh, put our, our template on GitHub um, just in case anyone's interested in playing around with Joomla. Um, it's, a, it's a really quick kind of... Um, I guess I can show it. It's not really set up yet. Friday, then. Friday. <laughs> After the conference. Right? Yeah. The idea being that, of course, as, you're, as anybody's building anything, they spend most of their time Googling what other people have done when they got to that point of the, of the thing. So, you know, we, do our, we are doing our best to do that as well, to pay, to pay into that bank as well as, you know, make, make withdrawals from it. Um, yeah, but it's just a simple, it's a simple sandbox, right? You have your main site, you have a couple of different features on there, um, and you have a secondary page. Um, and again, it's just a play. Maybe it's something that's for you, maybe not. That's okay. Um, but, but we have it. But so yeah, in a number of hours, right? you could set that up and have it fully running and maybe, maybe learn something about it um, that you can, lessons that you could take home with you. Right, right. Um, so, so we'll have that out there uh, if anyone's interested. Um, and I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. Um, does, so, yeah. does anybody have any questions? Were you, were you able to tear down a lot of the content you said it started 5,000 pages? So that 5,000 number is so much fun to say, but it's kind of misleading. The majority of those 5,000 pages are archived commissioners' court video and minutes pages, thousands of them. Um, we were absolutely able to pare down a bunch of content and we have significantly smaller garden that we're tending at this point, but it's still, you know, 4,000 pages, 3,000 pages, something like that are archived historical pages that will never change and we didn't even bring them over into the CMS. They're just still existing in the horrible, slightly less horrible, but in the horrible state that they were in. They get accessed very, very rarely, you know. Yes. That is because of our retention policy, but it is, but we are not legally beholden to maintain them. My thinking, we're hoarders. Yeah, we're hoarders. <laughs> My thinking was like, I don't, I don't want to throw things away if we've got them. You know, the the resources that it takes us to hold on to them right. is fairly small. And again, I see it as being a good steward of county resources. You know, somebody might find those interesting. Um, and it, it costs us very little in the grand scheme of things to maintain them. Um, it was a tricky process, but uh, you know, if you if you look at your pages and when you're redesigning, um, if you're trying to find out, like if you look at what's most popular, what people are asking about, those can help you sort of determine which ones you should focus on first out of the thousands, and then and then eventually come back around to the to the ones that need work. Um, but you kind of have to, you know, go step by step. Anyone else? We had a, t a tiny bit of it, but nothing like what we needed. Um, we all learned a lot. 
Yeah. For, well, you know, I mean, so I'm one of the people who I didn't have P. I mean, I had, you know, hello world level PHP um, when we got into that. But so many of the concepts are so much the same between programming languages. You know, the, the syntax is different. But again, you know, I feel like if you sit there with Google and you, you mess, mess your head against it, it's not the ideal way, but you, I mean, you have to work with the resources you have unless your <laughs> jurisdiction is the sort of place where you could say, well, sorry, we're laying you off and hiring PHP people, you know, that's, that wasn't realistic for us. And Thank goodness, up, because I would yeah. <laughs> be out of a job. Setting up a sandbox also, uh, like we were using IIS and they had tools that allowed you to set up uh, WordPress and Joomla and Drupal yeah. with like a one-click installation. Yeah. So even if you don't, you might not have it at that moment, you can get through those you know, install steps and to start testing it out and sort of building it as it goes. Yeah. You're going to be playing with it. So you know, you're gonna see if it works for you and if it doesn't, you know, why invest all of that time in getting something that just needs PHP in there? Yeah. And again, a lot of people are building you know, the, the stuff that's actual, custom, bespoke, handwritten PHP that we do, it's very, very slight. Just about everything we need to do, somebody's already written an extension, and it's out there, and you just have to, to get it to work. We do, have, we do have some places where we couldn't find anything that would work for us, but just about all of it is. So you have a property tax again? Yep. Okay. Yep. That? Yep. The, the property tax calculator, that thing? Or the... Well, So the pay their tax, so it's, this is the vagaries of Travis County. The Travis County Tax Office um, recently came in, had been out on an external a vendor's server. Now we've got them, we're hosting their site, but they had a pre-existing thing with that tax payment, um, uh, whatever, application, and they're maintaining that. Um, so um, we link to it, but we don't. Uh, we, don't, we didn't develop it. We also, there's an application development team at Travis County who built the, Travis County has a really uh, well built out jury um, in impaneling system that they built. That's not us. We just link to it. Us meaning the web team. Um, All right. What about election? So we, for a long time, we hosted election results. The county clerk recently decided that they wanted to host election results, so we are back up for election results, and we have, you know, on election night, we have been, oh, you guys have to do it, yeah. uh, several times. So it's, you know, um, we, don't, we don't do it uh, nominally, but we still are the backup, and um, it's good that we've been there a few times. So that hasn't come up much. In, it comes up sometimes, but it hasn't come up much. I mean, we, well, we try to end up using the officials. We say we need to get sort of you know, judge approval because we know that we can't say no to the judge or, or their you know, main manager type thing. Yeah. Um, but we haven't had a ton, luckily. Um, we, we really try to you know, control that in a way as much as possible. Um, a lot of people tend to be really worried, so sometimes you'll have things that you're like, you have to post these. We got judges' approval, and it's like a two paragraph long answer text box. And, you know, we can't do anything. The site yeah. looks kind of ugly for a week or two. While it's up there. Yeah, yeah while it's up there, and it's just kind of, you kind of have to it. But we also, I mean, our CIO, again, you know, has gone to bat for us a few times when somebody was asking for something outrageous, and, you know, it, I mean, it's kind of like this this game of chicken back and forth and back and forth, um, and it hasn't. We haven't, other than a few things where where there's some you know tax notice or something that we're legally beholden. But there hasn't been anything where we've really really felt terrible about um, about what's been on the page. Not for a while. We tried to hide it. Yeah. <laughs> Did you submit this to the awards? Pinnacle awards. We didn't. No. 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 We're bad with our deadline. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's the process for updating new content? So Joomla, as you probably know, allows you to update content from the front end 
and we have not rolled that out to any department except for parks. Sheriff's. Oh, sheriffs also because they have a they have a team for themselves. The challenge of having users in the wild updating content willy-nilly just is sort of terrifying. And as we get closer to the reality of it, like we need to implement some sort of a workflow where we can approve things based on any number of factors. And it's just it's not, we haven't we haven't implemented it yet. So users fill out a form. We put it in our queue through our changing change ticketing system, which is Change Gear, um, and you know we work on it. it. Goes in the queue, and unless it's a VIP, it gets done when it gets done. Um, yeah. uh, it's a design question about your homepage. I noticed the uh, Twitter feed. Mm -hmm. What was the reason about five uh, hundred and on the on the homepage? Yeah. We the uh, we were getting more. I guess response from that. We were trying to promote it more because uh, everyone's sort of trying to say with how to integrate social media with their website. Um, we were seeing that some people were giving it more prominence. We were also trying to use it more and make it make it more of a part of our daily sort of life. So so things like commissioners court meets every week and one of our staff always listens in and tweets as items are coming up. And that's embedded on the page. So we have a, a running you know, ticker of what's happening in Commissioner's Court. Yeah, part of that idea is that um, a lot of sites have like a news section. Um, we have that also, but we're trying to see if maybe Twitter would be enough. At this point, it's not. Yeah. Um, just because it goes away after so many tweets. Um, but it's, again, you're just playing with everyone's trying to test out this new frontier with the CIO's work. Yeah. It was also something, frankly, that was suggested to us by our CIO. She said, you know, why not try this out? So we're trying to do that. You know, we do the same thing. Um, our assistant city manager tweets what's happening at our council meeting. Uh -huh. And so we have it right there on our homepage for people to see. It's such, a, it's such an easy way to do it. It, yeah. it works really well. Also, because it's on the homepage, we work with other departments, uh, like emergency services. Uh, you know, a couple of times when we've had snow days. I guess it's, I guess it's a good um, We have a specific hashtag for them so that you know, when it's you know, two two o'clock in the morning, they say no one can go to work. Uh, they just go ahead and put that in. It goes to charge it the automatically, so it's on the homepage and you see right away. So it's it's working kind of nicely with like that with other departments. Yeah. I don't think I don't think we're done figuring out how that all fits together. Anyone else? Should we check the hashtag? Get off the stage. So was this significantly less, uh, so we sort of started writing this um, before, to some degree, um, this conference came up, and um, we have been a little bit concerned that our presentation was too play school, too sort of low, low on the beat. Okay, nothing? <laughs> you guys here? It's best for Hopefully you guys found it useful. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.